know about the main act. I will do my best. Um, Matt, you want to start? Anything further, or, or am I free to go? Well, I, I'm just curious because, you know, you, you went, when the secretary said by the end of the summer you won't have confirmed ambassadors in Egypt, Israel, Jordan, or, or Lebanon, but uh, I, I don't think, unless I'm wrong, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that there has been anyone even nominated to replace Tom <coughs> the, the point he was making is that we have, uh, we have, no, I mean, you can't complain. we, <laughs> if, if, no, if, if we had a nominee today, you, maybe, that, yeah, it, 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 that nominee know. would still face the same blanket hold after that nominee uh, went fine. through the Senate, the but regular process, still saying the blanket hold. Has has the White House nominated anyone? No, we have not yet nominated, but if you look at the and number of no, uh, let me finish. If you look at the, the if you look at the situation as it exists currently, all the nominees that start today are still backlogged based on what's happening in the floor. There's a there is a, a huge backlog. Okay. Yeah. I'm not debating that point. I'm just wondering if if are there have there been people nominated for those four for those four posts? We, we have uh, I, I don't have the full one of them has been. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I think, uh, but certainly no one for Israel. Uh, that's right. Well, the ambassador for, for Israel just stepped down in the last two weeks. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, but the, you're complaining about point, something that's going to happen later this summer, but you don't even have anyone. In the I pipeline. would be more than happy to withdraw the complaint if the Senate decides <laughs> to start moving on our, well, uh, our ambassadors expeditiously yeah. and we can count on the ambassador to nominate to, to, okay. nominee to Israel to be moved through unanimous right, consent, as these typically have been. I don't think I, I don't think I should, I don't think I, I don't, I don't think I should, I, I don't think I should do that. Ambassador Knight, did he already, I'm sorry, but just to clarify, Ambassador Knight, did he already leave his post? I, I believe he's, I believe he's finished his tenure, yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to follow up because we received a statement from Senator Paul, Rand Paul in response to, to Blinken's uh, letter and comments, and he's placing the blame with uh, Chairman Menendez, saying if, saying the committee will only return to expedited procedure when Chairman Menendez signs COVID-19 document requests. Is that something that the State Department would encourage Menendez to do? Is that some, something that you, you know, Blinken or officials have spoken to senators? Um, so, can you just speak to that? So I won't get into what is an in internal Senate issue. I will say with, uh, from our perspective, we have already provided documents to Senator Paul that are responsive to his requests. We have made clear that we uh, see this as an ongoing process. We will continue to provide documents that are responsive to his requests. But he is asking us for documents that are not State Department documents and documents that we cannot provide because they're not in our possession, but yet continues to use that as an excuse to hold up State Department nominees. As the Secretary point out, pointed out, who have never been held to this standard before. The vast majority of career ambassadors uh, have been not, have been confirmed through unanimous consent. So um, we are happy to engage, continue to engage in a, uh, a legitimate process with Senator Paul. I will let the Senator Menendez and speak to internal Senate issues, but he shouldn't be holding our, our nominees hostage because all that does is hurt our national security. Go ahead, Janie. The Union Security Council failed to announce last week a statement condemning the North Korea's ballistic missile launch violation due to opposition from China and Russia. As long as China and Russia protect North Korea in the Union Security Council, North Korea will not stop its provocation. What solution does the United States have to convince? China and well, I, I will just say, as, as you pointed out, you're right. Um, uh, all of the members of the UN Security Council, except Russia and China, voted to condemn the DPRK's continued violation of UN Security Council resolutions, uh, expressing concern about continued launches and calling for progress for dialogue. We hope the UN Security Council will continue to come together to address the DPRK's uh, actions, um, and I will say that this is an issue that the Secretary raised uh, in his meetings when we were uh, in China. It's a secret, uh, an issue we continue to raise with China, uh, and we would hope that uh, China and Russia would urge the DPRK to come to the table. Okay, thank you. Now, South Korean President Yoon made a supply visit to Ukraine and met with uh, President Zelensky and uh, President Yoon promised to help Ukraine with the military supplies and uh, 
big construction, how can you do it, evaluate this? Uh, we welcome the visit. We welcomed um, the president's ex expression of support. Um, we always think it's important when other foreign leaders can make the trip to Ukraine to speak firsthand with President Zelensky and other members of the Ukrainian government uh, to see the, the um, destruction that has been uh, uh, inflicted on that country by Russia. And we encourage every country in the world to, to join us in uh, supporting Ukraine. Thank you, Matt. Uh, my first question is about Pakistan. Uh, just had its core commanders conference held today, in which uh, they urged Afghanistan to take care of uh, the terrorist sanctuaries there, which are uh, coming and doing activities in Pakistan. And this is in one week. This is the second time the Pakistan military has openly uh, told Afghanistan to take some action. Otherwise, they are going to take some action against them. Uh, your comments about that? So I don't have any comments specifically on that, but I will say we have ma made very clear uh, that we believe the Taliban has the responsibility to prevent uh, uh, the ter uh, Afghanistan from being used as a safe haven for launching terrorist attacks. Okay, and my second question is about uh, President Modi and uh, the UAE president had a meeting uh, a few days ago, and they uh, decided to uh, do their trade of over $8 billion um, and cha uh, change it into uh, uh, their local currencies. Uh, we are seeing a big twist in the uh, dollarization value decrease over there. Is the U.S. paying any attention to that or doing any steps? Oh, that? we are, but I don't have any comment on it. Okay. Said. Thank you. Question on the Palestinian-Israeli issue. Uh, Peace Now reports that since the beginning of January, the Israelis have approved something like 13,000 new housing settlement units and so on. I mean, that sounds like a broken record, but what could the, this administration do to sort of deter the Israelis instead of rewarding them? I mean, we see that the president of Israel is coming, maybe the prime minister of Israel is coming, you know, so. Uh, I will say, as I've said before, that we have been absolutely clear on this issue. The United States opposes such unilateral actions uh, that make a two-state solution more difficult to achieve and are an obstacle to, to peace. That includes settlement activity. Um, uh, we have made this clear publicly, made it clear in conversation with you a number of times, and we make it clear in our conversations with Israeli government officials. Uh, another question on uh, journal, uh, a journalist, uh, a Palestinian journalist that has been arrested by the Palestinian Authority for conducting his job. I know that the PA you know, you're the benefactor of the PA in many ways. So do you have any comment on the, the brutality of the Palestinian Authority in terms of dealing with Palestinian journalists? I don't have any comment on this specific case. I would say that, broadly speaking, the United States supports press freedom and the protection of all journalists in carrying out their work. Are you aware of the arrest of Akhil Awadeh? Uh, I've seen the reports. Today, that uh, um, Prime Minister Netanyahu has been invited to come to the U.S. Um, to meet to meet with President Biden. Um, you know, you've, you've expressed these these concerns over and over. You know, often in response to Saeed questions, but in response to many different actions that the Israeli government has taken, you know, you're expressing concerns about about the policies of this government. But we now see an invitation being extended. We've got the president coming. Um, I guess, what's your response to the, to the, you know, the, I think a lot of people would see that and say, you're not following up these uh, concerns with any sort of tangible action. I would say I think that the characterization oversimplifies uh, our relationship uh, with this government. As is true for a number of our allies, um, uh, there are things with which we agree with Israel and things with which we disagree. Um, I, we make clear in all of our engagements with Israel that our, uh, our commitment to their security is ironclad. Uh, at the same time, we, make, we raise concerns that we have with them. We also have priorities that we're working on with respect to the government of Israel. As you know, Secretary Blinken traveled to Saudi Arabia recently where he pressed for uh, norm normalization with Saudi Arabia. We've, we've uh, uh, launched an extensive effort, effort to deepen and bro broaden um, uh, normalization with other countries in the region. So yes, we do have concerns with certain actions the, the government of Israel takes, but we have other, other issues in which we have shared priorities and we work together. So. Uh, our relationship with them is one where we have some things we agree on and work together, and other places where we have concerns and we press them privately and publicly. One of those issues that you are in touch with them on is that um, 
Israelis getting access to the uh, visa waiver program. Um, there's been some reporting out, out of Israel. Israeli officials seem to be sort of suggesting that they, uh, they're going to be able to move forward on that, that there might be a pilot program to see whether um, you know, Palestinian Americans can travel in, the, in the, the same way as other Americans in Israel. Could, is there any update you can give us on Israel's chances of getting into that program soon? I am not going to comment on those reports or prognosticate on, on their chances other than to say that we continue to be in discussions with Israel about this matter. Um, we continue to work with them toward fulfilling the visa waiver program requirements, including extending reciprocal privileges to all U.S. citizens and nationals, including Palestinian Americans, to travel to and through Israel. It's an important issue. It's one we've engaged with them on for some time, but I don't have an update uh, on the status. Yeah, go ahead. Last week, Iraq has signed a, a deal with Tehran that exchanged gas for oil, and it, that uh, this has likely violated your sanctions on Iran. Any reactions to that? Um, I, I don't. We continue to monitor that issue. Okay, and one last question. Uh, this week, the Iraqi Prime Minister visited Syria and met with uh, Bashar Assad, and also they discussed about different issues in the region. Uh, as the Syrian Bashar Assad coming back to the regional arena, do you have a clear policy towards the Kurdish issue in Syria? How do you want to resolve the Kurdish issue in Syria at this stage? Uh, let me take that one back. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan signaled that we might have to wait till October to see the Turkish parliament ratifying Sweden's succession to NATO. Based on your recent conversations that you have with the Turkish government, are you optimistic? that this might move uh, forward faster and get it done earlier before October? Uh, I won't speak to timelines. I will say that we, were, uh, we are optimistic that uh, uh, Sweden's accession into NATO will be approved. Uh, we appreciate uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Erdogan's work on this matter. Uh, President, excuse me. Uh, I knew as it came out of my mouth that it was wrong. We appreciate President Erdogan's work on this matter. Um, uh, but I don't have any timeline other than to say that we hope it's approved as soon as possible. Go ahead. Keep going. The Office of the Special Envoy for Iran in gaining the release of the uh, dual national Americans imprisoned in Iran? Uh, I do not. It's a, uh, an issue on which that office continues to be engaged. Uh, we are working to return, uh, we're working to secure the return of those American citizens, but I don't have any update. Has the needle moved at all since the last? I, I, I just don't have any update, other than to say it continues to be an important priority for us. Okay. Um, Again, in Iran now, uh, the uh, police or the government has started a new crackdown uh, for hijab uh, since um, <clears throat> the anniversary of Masa Amini's death is approaching. Any comments on that? Uh, I will say that um, we are concerned by the reports uh, that Iran's so-called morality police are cracking, again cracking down to enforce mandatory hijab. It seems the regime has learned nothing from the recent protests. Uh, and we believe that women and girls everywhere should be allowed to wear what they want. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kosovo Prime Minister Albin Kurti uh, has stated that Kosovo police is the extension of the KLA, which, you know, was the militia during uh, the war in the 90s. So if the Kosovo police um, president of Serbia told me in the interview for the public today, I'm quoting, he said, if the Kosovo police is the successor of the KLA, then the legal fact is the KLA and all the groups that emerge from it are prohibited by the UN uh, Resolution 1244. Um, he said that he's going to talk uh, about this with the NATO Secretary General this week uh, in Brussels. My question, do you support uh, Alvin Kurti's rhetoric that Kosovo police is the extension of the KLA? Let me take that one back and get you an answer. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I'll come to you uh, next. Go ahead. So um, the other thing uh, related to the um, situation in, in the north of Kosovo. Um, so President of Serbia said that since the beginning of this year, uh, I'm quoting him, seven Serbs have been wounded uh, in attacks by the Albanians. Um, and he said uh, this often involves official Albanian figures um, like police officers of members of Kosovo security forces. And he said no legal proceedings um, are being con conducted against those responsible uh, for, for targeting Serbian population in the north. 
So, and he said that NATO must put an end to all these provocations. So, are you, uh, as the United States, are going to address the arrest of the Serbian population in the north of Kosovo? I, I will say, um, I will reiterate what we said before, which is that we um, uh, urge both sides to take steps to de-escalate and return to the EU-facilitated dialogue. Go ahead. Thanks, Matt. Two quick questions regarding China. And what is President Biden's uh, response to holding China accountable for their organ harvesting, forced sterilization, labor, and abortion of Muslim or Muslim uh, Uyghurs in Chinese internment camps, as well as Christian persecution, not only in China, but internationally, and then follow up on it. I will say we have been very clear that we oppose the treatment uh, of Uyghurs in China and have taken steps al already, a number of steps to hold China accountable for those actions. Okay, about Christian persecution. You have a and comment? Same. Go ahead. Okay, and then what is Pre President Biden's response? to U.S. national security concerns with Chinese companies owning America's farmland and businesses. Uh, uh, let me take that one back. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, has China provided any explanation for Foreign Minister Chen Long's absence? Uh, they've said that he is um, dealing with health issues. Uh, Secretary Blinken uh, met uh, at the end of last week uh, with Wang Yi, uh, another one of his counterparts, and expressed um, uh, his best wishes uh, to see him soon different topic. Did the precedent set by the department in the Afghan dissent cable, giving that to the House Foreign Affairs Committee, set um, or the change the way or allow Senator Rand Paul to make demands that are piecemeal came? Uh, I certainly don't believe so. We saw that as an extraordinary accommodation that we made um, uh, to uh, the Congress in, in a very special circumstance. Uh, as you know, we allowed members of Congress to come here and read that cable um, behind closed doors. Uh, we see that as a very different issue than the, the demands that Senator Paul is making. Uh, and again, I would just reiterate, um, it, it, Senator Paul can make legitimate requests of the State Department, of others in the administration. What we object to is him holding hostage nominees who are career uh, uh, Foreign Service officers who have served in Republican and Democratic administrations alike. Many of them have been nominated to and confirmed for ambassadorships under Republican presidents, including the, the previous administration holding those nominees up for issues that have nothing to do with their qualifications and hurting our national security process, our national security in the process, that's what we object to. Janet. The South Ukraine uh, offensive, a defense official said today that uh, since the latest counteroffensive began, they've been able to retake about 81 square miles of territory. That's a little larger than the size of D.C. Now compare that to the 4,600 square miles that Ukraine was able to take during the first counteroffensive. Does the U.S. and its allies see that as a significant step forward for Ukraine, or does the, the strategy here need to be revised? I, I will say, as I've said consistently since the beginning of this counteroffensive, that from this podium I'm not going to pass judgment on the progress or uh, provide kind of minute-by-minute minute updates on what is ultimately a military matter that doesn't even involve our own military. Uh, I will say from, from our perspective, uh, obviously, the Russians have had time to dig in, to fortify, to, to uh, put landmines all over the Ukrainian countryside. And so I know that the Ukrainians expected that this would be a difficult process. We expected that it would be a difficult process. I think the important thing is that the Ukrainians have everything they need to conduct this counteroffensive. They have yet to, con to commit all of the military units that they have available to them, including some units that were trained by NATO forces over the past year. Um, so I would say it is still early days in the counteroffensive, but as, as to any battlefield assessments, I will leave that to the Ukrainians. Yeah, go ahead. So a couple of hours ago, uh, House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall said he hoped that uh, U.S. could put some leverage on countries like Turkey that are depending on F-16s to use their leverage on Putin for the grain deal. Is there any link between F-16 sales to Turkey and the grain deal, and are you in touch with Congress or Ankara? today about Russia's decision about the grain um, There is no link, and I will say that Turkey um, uh, has, has been at the forefront of encouraging Russia to uh, first enter into and then extend the Black Sea Grain Initiative. So Turkey has been uh, a, 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 a leader in this effort of trying to secure food supplies for the entire world. We have commended them for their efforts, and it is Russia that is holding up this initiative, not Turkey or any other country. Very quick question on two question on Bangladesh. After returning bang back under Secretary Zaya, Bangladesh regime is back to you know under attack the opposition parties, rallies. And just we yesterday there was a election by election, though 
main opposition boycotted because of that, that they, the uh, even independent candidate under attack came under attack. He's in hospital now. So and less than 10% uh, vote casted. And so how could you believe that that Prime Minister Hasina will ensure free fair election as you know 2014 and 2018 election was not free fair and still the by-election is not free and fair and fair candidates like under attack. So what is your position on that? How do you follow this? I would say that uh, this type of political violence has no place in democratic elections. We encourage the government of Bangladesh to uh, investigate any reports of violence thoroughly, transparently, and impartially, and to hold the perpetrators of violence to account. And I would ex say that, as we have said before, that we would expect the government of Bangladesh to hold free and fair elections, and we continue to monitor it closely. Yeah, the, uh, uh, just Wednesday night in New York, one of the opposition uh, activists uh, protest uh, in front of the ruling visiting our party MP. And just after a few hours, the, his family got under attack in the, in back home in Bangladesh his brother and his mother and the family members. And the government ruling party put it in live Facebook that they are attacking who is raising boys outside the country, they are attacking in their home. So it was in under live. Uh, so if someone is talking from US or protesting or arguing with the government party, so, uh, and they are not safe in their home country. So what is your views on that? I, I would just say again that that type of violence that you mentioned has no place in democratic elections. Um, yeah, I wondered if you could say anything about the meeting the secretary had today with the CEOs of Intel, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA, and how much uh, the, this department sort of looks to the private sector to, uh, in terms of feedback on, on policy towards China, particularly restrictions on, on semiconductors. Yeah, I would say the secretary looked at that meeting as an opportunity to do two things. Number one, to share his perspective uh, on the industry and on supply chain issues, uh, especially after his recent visit to China and number two, to hear directly from those companies about how they see supply chain issues, about how they see um, uh, uh, doing business in, in China. Um, we've seen China recently announce restrictions on the export of materials that are used to construct um, uh, chips, and so he saw it as a productive meeting to exchange views on those two issues. And, um, just moving on to a slightly, slightly different issue, um, Thailand, uh, last week, the, uh, the parliament uh, was unable to, uh, or d didn't approve um, uh, Peter, the head of the Move Forward Party, um, to, to become the prime minister. I wondered, you know, I know the U.S. has kind of spoken a little bit to, to the, the current sort of post-election environment in Thailand, but are you concerned that the party, Move Forward, is the party that won the most seats in the, in the elections in, uh, in May, um, that a government, you know, could end up being formed without them being represented. Let me say a few things. First, that the United States doesn't have a preferred outcome in the Thai election. We don't support any particular party uh, or politician. What we do support is multi-party de uh, democracy and a post-election process that reflects the will of the Thai people and supports a democratic and prosperous future for Thailand. Uh, we are very closely watching the post-election developments. Uh, that includes the recent developments in the legal system, which are of concern. Uh, we believe this moment is an opportunity for Thailand to demonstrate its commitment to democracy. And, you, know, just, you mentioned the developments in the legal system that are of concern. I wonder if you could say a little bit more clearly if uh, Mr. Pita is, is disqualified uh, from, from taking office um, or if the party is, is dissolved, does that represent a red line for the U.S.? I, I don't want to speculate about how we might react to events that have not yet occurred. I will say that we are watching it closely, and the recent developments uh, are of concern to us. Um, Michelle, why don't you go ahead and close this out? Uh, the U.S. has attended a meeting uh, in Qatar on Lebanon today, and the meeting included uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, France, and Qatar. Do you have any readout for the meeting? Um, we have a statement that e either gone out wise at the podium will be going out shortly um, uh, on this meeting. Uh, what I will say is that the five countries underscored our commitment to Lebanon's sovereignty and independence. Uh, uh, we noted with, with concern, however, that nearly nine months after the end of the president's term, Lebanon's political leaders have yet to elect a successor. 
We also underscored the desperate need for judicial reform and implementation of the rule of law, especially in regard to the 2020 Port of Beirut explosion investigation. Uh, and we'll have more details in the statement that comes out soon. Do you support the elections of the Lebanese Armed Forces Commander as, uh, as the President? Um, we do not take positions on elections. Thank you.